Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to ServiceNow 911. In today's video, we are starting the series of change management. And the first video is about the basics. So let's start with the basics. The very first thing is what is change management? Change is the addition, modification or removal of anything that could have effect on IT services. It means in an organization, we have a system where we are getting the services, right? The complete system is already set up. And in that system, if we add, modify or remove anything and it has an impact on IT services, either it is increasing, decreasing, satisfying, attributing or anything, whatever you do that is changing any parameter with respect to IT services is known as change management in ITIL or change for the time being. Okay, let's say you are making some changes in the email setup. That is a change. Let's say you are removing some outdated services. This is also a change because you are modifying the system. So this is the change. Okay, so now let's come to the next topic that is what is change management? So guys, whatever you are changing, you need to keep track of that thing because you are not be there in the system always, right? You may change the company or the company want a proper versioning of any change happening because in future, if they want to track back, they can easily do so. So that's why the process of tracking and managing a change throughout its life cycle, starting from the start to the closure with the aim of minimizing the risk is known as change management. Let me give you a very basic example here. Let's say you are a developer. You got a requirement to make some changes in the system. And for that you have written five line of code. And then you promoted that code into the production. But in production, you notice that the code is not working properly. So you made some extra changes and those extra changes lead to some other problem. It means the cycle of problem goes and goes and goes. And finally, after six hours of brainstorming, you are able to run the code properly. However, the system is working with respect to your requirement, but it is failing with respect to other things because you have made some additional changes without noticing, without telling anyone. And after 10 to 20 days or maybe after one month, those changes, those issues are uh, started occurring. So now the team who is responsible for that, looking into the system and checking who has made the changes. First of all, they have to look what changes are done and then they have to track back like who did the changes. And because of the fear of your manager, because of the fear of your name, shame and all the other things, you are not disclosing your name or you are not telling the team that, okay, these are the changes I have done. So this is the example of poor change management. I am telling you very basic thing, but uh, people have done blunders because of this. If they are not tracking each and every step, what they are doing in the change management or in the system. So that's why change management is a very, very important thing for any organization while making the changes if you are doing it properly you are also minimizing the risk right as i told you in the previous example how the risk increases or elevated when you are not doing things properly so that's why change management is must for any kind of change next question is what is the objective of change management so the objectives are simple we already discussed it here to control the life cycle of all the changes yes Enabling beneficial changes to be made within the system with minimum disruption of IT services. Yes, the ultimate goal is to provide best service and to disrupt the IT services at the minimal. What are the examples of change management? A bug fix deployed in the production. You are making or updating any bug. You are fixing any bug. A patch are installed. You are updating any patch. You are upgrading or you are fixing any problem with high priority incidents. Anything which is disrupting, which is diluting or elevating the services with respect to that, any change is known as a change. So now we have all the basics of change management. Now let's go to the types of changes. Yes, there are certain ways by which we do the changes. The very first one is standard change. A standard change is a pre-authorized change that is a low risk, relatively common and follow a specific procedure or work instruction. As we are in organization, we are making changes on daily basis. So the change which is already known to the people, the change which is already pre-approved or pre-authorized is known as a standard change. With respect to standard change, we know what is the change we are going to do. 
when we are going to do the change what is the risk associated with that change does all party with respect to that change are involved or not these all aspects are handled very well in standard change so what are the example of standard change anything which you are doing on day-to-day -day basis let's say you got a requirement you worked on it you created the code now you are deploying it to the production this is an example of standard change because you are following all the procedures you are taking all the good practices into consideration here after standard change we have this emergency change so as the name suggests this is a change which need immediate action that must be implemented as soon as possible for example to resolve a major incident or implement a security patch so whenever the IT services are disrupted in a major way you are getting a major incident let's say one of the location of your company is facing a network outage and as this location is very customer friendly it means the customer are directly interacting with the business from there it means if the services are down there it has huge impact on your services on the money as well as on your reputation that's why you need to up that service immediately as soon as possible so in that case we have to create an emergency change and restore the services as soon as possible now we come to the last type of change that is normal change it is any service change that is not a standard change or an emergency change it means it is not a standard one and it is not a emergency one so can you give an example of that any kind of upgrade which you are doing let's say in service now we are upgrading the system two times a year right and that is not a standard thing because it is not done with any changes within the company structure right it is not a company's requirement but in order to keep up with the pace of you know changing IT world with the pace of new technologies we have to upgrade the systems as per the recommendation of service now so in that case we create a normal change one more example is the hardware upgrade let's say let's say windows 2010 is obsolete it is very much mandatory for the organizations to upgrade to the newer version of windows this is also a kind of change okay which is with respect to the vendor and we have to follow it so that is what comes under a normal change generally they are not impacting us with respect to the services in a negative way it is most of the time are helpful and providing much more upper cut to the technology and hence provide a better services to the customer so i hope you understand all the three type of changes this is very important you must have clear understanding of this then we have the change management roles and responsibilities there are certain roles which you must be aware of the very first one is change initiator so anyone who is initiating the change and taking full responsibility of the change like requirement gathering uh, creating a change and then following up with the people is known as change initiator then we have the change manager the person who is overall responsible for all the change management process within the organization he has to take care of each and everything with respect to the change management his aim is to optimize change management up to maximum and make it so useful make it so easy for the people or the users to use it then we have the change advisory board this is one of the very important board you know in any organization the systems are interconnected let's say there are five departments and these five departments are interconnected these five domains are interconnected right and if i make a change in one it may or may not impact other so while we are sending some changes in the production while we are making the changes it must be understood by each and every party member here within the change advisory board so who is the part of change advisory board it is the leader of each and every domain right the top leader the top managers so while promoting the changes there is a meeting known as gap meeting that is change advisory board meeting in that these people sit down and they understand each and every change whether one change is impacting other things or not okay so all such discussions were going on and if they see that the change is impacting others then they have the power to oppose the change or make some modification in the change so that minimum disruption of IT services happen and the things which you are going to change in the system will also get happen.
right so both things will be done simultaneously then change approver change implementation team these are very basics approver is who anyone with that particular domain or anyone like change manager or change implementation team is what it is the team who is managing the change so after all the roles we have the state or the life cycle of a change so till now we have discussed three type of changes and in each changes we have certain states and you see here all the states are available normal change state progression the very first one is the new state it means the change is new you just want to make the changes for that you have created one change request and then next state is assess it means we are doing some assessment with respect to that change so in assessment i already discussed a cab meeting or other discussions are going on whether this change is valid whether we want to do the change when we want to do the change all such kind of planning happens in the assessment state then we have the authorization after all these plannings and everything uh, pre approvals are done then it's time to authorize the change okay and then we have scheduling the change because we are okay now it's time to schedule the change okay when we want to make the changes so as per the company structure as per the availability and all and all we schedule the change properly then on the scheduling day we are implementing the change and then finally after the change is implemented successfully we are reviewing the change it means we are doing one more check in the production whether the changes what we have done are okay or not whether it is impacting anyone or not okay and once everything goes good we can close the change you see here till step number 5 that is implementation we have the option to cancel the change at any time if anyone has any objection or anything which is not covered they can go and cancel the change depends on organization to organization so like normal change we have the standard change here also the diagram is a bit different okay but states are almost the same in the same way we have this emergency change what is happening in emergency as soon as the change is created it can be cancelled or it will come to authorization directly not like this it has to assess it is skipping the assess part here assessment is not done here it just authorized and then scheduled and then immediately implemented finally reviewed and closed so this is how these changes progress okay so you have to understand each and every type so ladies and gentlemen you know in different different organization the type of changes are different and the workflow of a particular change may differ but this is the basic which we are discussing you may see certain deviations between the states or how things are get processed with respect to each and every change in your organization but for basic this is fine and then finally how to create a change creating a change is a very simple thing you can create a change directly from change application you can create a change from incident record you can create a change from problem record we already know what is the relation between incident problem and change once an incident happened it means some issue occurred then based on that incident if it is not a urgent incident it means if it is not a priority one incident we come to a problem where the incident issue is addressed properly the team will find the root cause and once we have the root cause then finally we do the change right so this is the proper way of relation between incident problem and change so you can create a change from problem you can create a change from templates you can create a change from service catalog as well depends on your organization as simple as that so with this we are done with the basics of change management if you come in this particular instance you see a proper change application is available very basic things are available here let me open the change table this is the change table let me open one of the change record so you see based on the type you see all the states are available here at the top and in our next video we are going to discuss each and every field of this change management table because many of the fields are fine but i can see here risk 
right conflict these all are some different different concepts so we will discuss all these one by one and understand what is the necessary of all these fields so just wait for next session till then subscribe to the channel share this with your friend let me know if you have any question bye bye thank you so much